The Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. Violent protests followed. And what comes next could be even worse. Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. Be sure you're subscribed, because YouTube has been secretly unsubscribing people. And since YouTube also hasn't been notifying people of new episodes, we have something new every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday, so check back often. Well, it's happened. The Supreme Court has overturned Roe v. Wade. We've basically known this is going to happen since May. That's when the Supreme Court's draft opinion on overturning Roe v. Wade was leaked. But since it was still a draft, there wasn't a guarantee that the court would actually overturn Roe. One of the justices could have changed their mind, which has happened before. Roe v. Wade was almost overturned in 1992. So in some ways, people shouldn't be so shocked that it actually happened 30 years later. After all, the 90s are back. But the final Supreme Court ruling that overturned Roe is very similar to the leaked draft opinion. It's just a little longer. After all, when you go through the trouble of making a 98-page draft, who wants to do major rewrites? The biggest difference is the addition of a decision summary, Justice Thomas's concurring opinion, Justice Kavanaugh's concurring opinion, Justice Roberts' semi-concurring opinion, and the dissenting opinion from Justices Sotomayor, Kagan, and Breyer. It adds up. Yeah, 213 pages, and we read them. That's why we don't rush out with these episodes. We actually take time to do some research. Also, writing abortion jokes is hard. Two previous Supreme Court decisions, Roe v. Wade and Planned Parenthood v. Casey, essentially made abortion legal in the United States. Now, what they actually did was make it illegal for states to ban abortion before a fetus was viable, around 24 weeks. Or 12 weeks if it was Bear Grylls' kid, which was a Discovery Channel show idea that was Thankfully shot down. Look, I said abortion jokes are hard. The Supreme Court made their latest decision on abortion in a case called Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization. An abortion clinic sued the state of Mississippi because it had passed a law banning abortion after only 15 weeks, which violated the rulings from Rowan Casey. But as a result of that case, the Supreme Court has overruled both Roe and Casey. The court's decision sparked a lot of nuanced conversation online. Just kidding. I miss the good old days when the internet was just a dumpster fire. Now it's a festering sewage plant that's also on fire. Protests erupted across the country, some of which quickly descended into violence and clashes with police. Okay, so business as usual in America these days. Phew. And I was afraid things would get weird for a second there. By the way, YouTube probably demonetized us for showing that protest footage. And since we can't make this show if we're broke, please consider supporting us on our crowdfunding platform, patreon.com slash America Uncovered. All it takes is a dollar an episode. Or you can make a monthly contribution on our censorship-free social media platform on americauncovered.locals.com. But besides the general protests, Supreme Court justices themselves are being targeted. Some activists have posted their home addresses. And a few weeks ago, someone allegedly tried to assassinate Justice Kavanaugh. Still surprised that wasn't bigger news. Security around the justices has been heightened. Wow, if only everyone could get extra security outside their home before announcing something unpopular. Heck, my job is reporting things that are unpopular. Can I get some taxpayer money to build myself a moat? Just a heads up to any would-be protesters, I don't actually live there. President Biden also responded to the situation. He called for the protests to remain peaceful. And, as is often the case these days, he was ignored. Sometimes I wonder if he can carry his presidency to full term. Biden also called for a new federal law on abortion. This is a sad day for the country, in my view. But it doesn't mean the fight's over. Let me be very clear and unambiguous. The only way we can secure a woman's right to choose in the balance that existed is for Congress to restore the protections of Roe v. Wade as federal law. 
and he encouraged voters to vote for Democrats in November. We need to restore the protections of Roe as law of the land. We need to elect officials who will do that. This fall, Roe is on the ballot. Yes, vote for Democrats. And they'll definitely pass a law legalizing abortion like they said they've been meaning to do for decades, but just haven't gotten around to it. This time will be totally different. Don't forget to donate. President Biden also called the decision extreme. A lot. It's a realization of an extreme ideology and a tragic error by the Supreme Court, in my view. This is extreme and dangerous path the court is now taking us on. With this decision, the conservative majority of the Supreme Court shows how extreme it is. So extreme, so extreme, so extreme, extreme, extreme. I can't tell if he's describing the Supreme Court or every snack from the 90s. How are those Cheetos? Cheesy to the extreme. And of course, Biden blamed Donald Trump. It was three justices named by one president, Donald Trump, who were the core of today's decision to upend the scales of justice and eliminate a fundamental right for women in this country. And this is one time Trump was more than happy to take the blame. He said overturning Roe v. Wade was only possible because he delivered. Just another one of many deliveries some people want to prevent. Hey, I guess abortion jokes really aren't that tough. Some liberal lawmakers, including Bernie Sanders and AOC, are calling for an end to the Senate filibuster, packing the Supreme Court, or both. Which they'd really regret if Republicans sweep the midterms in a few months. I guess the theme of today's episode is getting stuck with the consequences of your poor decisions. But in all the uproar, there's something that may have gotten lost. Overturning Roe and Casey does not mean abortion is illegal in the United States. In fact, if you've watched the show, you know things are always more nuanced and complicated than they appear to be. So, if you'd like to take a bit of a rest from the online screeching, I'd invite you to join me after the break. Welcome back. So, a nuanced talk about abortion. Is it possible? We'll see. First of all, what does it mean that both Roe and Casey have been overturned? Basically, things go back to the way they were before the 1973 Roe ruling. Individual states get to make their own abortion laws without restrictions. This means there will be a range of laws going from a total ban on abortion to completely unrestricted abortion. I know some parents who will be more than happy to opt for that late, late-term abortion. Either move out of the basement or we're getting an abortion, Todd. Thirteen states have so-called trigger laws in place set to ban abortion if Roe v. Wade was overturned. Some of these laws went into effect immediately, while others have a waiting period. All of these trigger laws have an exception that allows abortion when the life of the mother is at risk. Some states also make exceptions in the case of rape, incest, or when there is a fatal fetal abnormality. So, not a total ban. Meanwhile, 15 states protect abortion access through laws. Some states even have it in their state constitutions. Washington, D.C. is also in that list, although it's technically not a state. Some of these places are even talking about becoming abortion sanctuary states. NBC News will even tell you how far you have to travel to get an abortion. There are also states where abortion is legal up until a certain number of weeks, but the state does not guarantee abortion access. Other states have laws restricting, but not banning abortion. It gets complicated. Making things more confusing is the fact that some pro-abortion groups are inflating the number of states that are banning abortion. The pro-abortion research organization, the Guttmacher Institute, says 26 states are going to ban abortion. They get that number by including states that once had bans 50 years ago, which again are unclear if they're actually going to enforce. They also include states that have some restrictions, but not an outright ban. Look, you don't need to try and amplify the outrage on abortion. There's already plenty. The problem is a lot of people don't understand how laws are made in America, including apparently President Biden, who on the campaign trail promised to codify Roe v. Wade into law. Another broken promise. You see, the Supreme Court does not make laws. Its job is to interpret the law. Making laws is the job of the legislative branch, either at the state or federal level. The problem is, through its interpretations of the law, 
The Supreme Court has, in effect, made laws, which is a scary thought, because nine unelected people were never meant to have that much power for life. So after the break, I'll delve into what the Supreme Court actually said about abortion. Welcome back. I'm sure that was just a black screen with no ads. So, why did the Supreme Court overturn Roe v. Wade? The majority opinion said it was never constitutional to begin with. The Roe v. Wade decision was based on the 14th Amendment, which states, no state shall deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Now you might be thinking, what does that have to do with abortion? Well, you see, it was argued in Roe v. Wade that due process implies a right to privacy, such as the privacy between a woman and her doctor in making a medical decision, like, say, abortion or plastic surgery, although that one is harder to keep secret. In the majority opinion, Justice Alito now argues, however, that the Constitution makes no reference to abortion and no such right is implicitly protected by any constitutional provision, including the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment. In fact, when the 14th Amendment was written, three quarters of the states had made abortion a crime at any stage of pregnancy. So Alito is basically saying it's a stretch to claim the Supreme Court can interpret the 14th Amendment in a way that the people who wrote it didn't. On top of that, the Roe v. Wade ruling gave very specific instructions on when states could restrict abortion. The majority said it made it more like legislation than a legal opinion, which again is not the job of the Supreme Court. So with no federal legislation on abortion, despite decades of promises from Democrats, ultimately, Alito wrote, it is time to return the issue of abortion to the people's elected representatives, which is in keeping with the 10th Amendment. The power is not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. But Alito isn't the only one writing an opinion. While Alito's majority opinion, joined by Gorsuch, Kavanaugh, Thomas, and Barrett, is the one officially held by the court, there were a lot of other opinions too. Chief Justice Roberts did not join the majority opinion. While he thought that the court should uphold the Mississippi law banning abortion after 15 weeks, he didn't think that the court should fully overturn Roe or Casey. Instead, he wanted to get rid of the requirement that states need to wait for the fetus to be viable before banning abortion, and leave for another day whether abortion is a constitutional right. In other words, kick the can down the road. Meanwhile, Kavanaugh, while joining the majority opinion, emphasized that the Constitution is neutral on abortion, and therefore the Supreme Court needs to be neutral too. He wrote that the unelected Supreme Court does not have the constitutional authority to override the democratic process. As for Thomas, I'll get to his opinion in a moment because it has some other major bombshells. But here's something that'll blow your mind. You know what other Supreme Court justice had problems with Roe v. Wade? Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She was well known for her critique of Roe v. Wade, even though she was pro-abortion. She would have preferred that abortion rights be secured more gradually, in a process that included state legislatures and the courts. Now that idea might not make some people happy. That's because it's not supposed to. The US system is based on negotiation and compromise. You actually have to convince people of your position. Now, there will always be some people who want a total ban on abortion under any circumstance. And there will be people who want completely unlimited abortion right up to birth. And sometimes after birth, Todd. Well, now people are actually going to have to deal with each other and pass laws. I know that can seem annoying, but remember in the old days before the Founding Fathers set up this system, if there was a conflict between two sides, it would be settled when the stronger side massacred the other. Our system isn't perfect, but it sure ain't the worst. Speaking of our system, it allows the Supreme Court justices who don't agree with the majority opinion to also write their own dissenting opinion, which Justices Breyer, Kagan, and Sotomayor did. The dissenting judges wrote, we believe in a constitution that puts some issues off limits to majority rule. Basically, they said that some issues shouldn't be up for a vote. Specifically, people's rights shouldn't be up for a vote. And the liberal justices see the court's overturning of Roe v. Wade as a restriction on women's rights. 
their right to bodily autonomy. They say the Constitution places limits on the state's power to control an individual's body and decisions. So, because they see this as being about personal rights, they argue that putting the decision on abortion back to the states is not, in fact, neutral, like Kavanaugh claimed. Rather, the court acts neutrally when it protects the right against all comers. They ended by saying the decision takes aim at the rule of law and undermines the court's legitimacy. At the end, they signed off with, we dissent, instead of the typical, we respectfully dissent. Ooh, gotta watch my blood pressure, cause those SCOTUS judges are salty. But now let me get back to Justice Thomas's opinion and the havoc he may have unleashed. Remember, Roe was based around the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment. That's also been used by the Supreme Court to rule on other rights. But in Thomas's opinion, he said the whole practice of using due process to cover rights not mentioned in the Constitution was bogus. So he said the Supreme Court should revisit other due process cases. Those cases include rights to contraception and gay marriage. And although Thomas didn't mention it in his opinion, it would also include interracial marriage. So Thomas's opinion made a lot of people nervous, like his wife. But while Thomas's opinion made a lot of headlines, it's important to say that it was only his opinion. None of the other justices agreed with him. The dissenting justices did bring up the same point, that the Supreme Court overturning Roe and Casey could leave the door wide open to overturning gay marriage and contraception rights. But Alito's majority opinion explicitly rejected this. They said that it was an unfounded fear, specifically because abortion is different from those other rights. So was overturning Roe and Casey just the beginning? Stay tuned to America Uncovered. So what do you think? What will happen next? Let us know in the comments. And we could not make this show without support from viewers like you. If you can help us for as little as a dollar per episode, head over to patreon.com slash America Uncovered. Or our exclusive censorship-free social media platform, americauncovered.locals.com. The links to both are in the description below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.